do like one per year. Okay. And they're always kind of like. So a this lot is of it, stuff. huh? This is it. Just in time for NAB. Just in time for NAB. Maybe they're doing that now. Um, let us know when we're right about to go to YouTube because we'll do our countdown and we'll get rolling. So excited for this show, everybody. Say hi in the chat. Um, we got LinkedIn Live working. Hi, everybody on Twitch. YouTube and Facebook starts now. So it's time. Here we go, everybody. Let's get started. Uh, we have had some technical problems. Problem, problem. Four, three, two, one, zero. It's time test. Welcome to Stream Geeks Live. Hello. Happy Monday, everybody. We're live every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And today we're covering OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, the world's most popular live streaming software. It's really exciting every time they come up with a new edition. And this year we are on OBS 25. That's right. The 25th um, version of OBS, the open source project, live streaming software that is totally free. And um, it take, it's been about a year since we've seen a new update to OBS. The last few updates have been game changing. We'll go over some of the uh, some of the new updates, but also some of the game changers from 23 and 24. So we're going to jump right into this, guys. If you have any questions, let us know in the chat room on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitch. We're here taking a look. Say hi. Let us know you're watching. And uh, you're going to get a great preview of OBS 25. It's in beta. So this is release candidate number two. Let's jump into it. OBS release. This is a beta, everybody. So don't use it for your live production. This is for fun. And uh, let's jump into it, Tess. Let's, let's take a look at OBS 25. There are quite a few new installments on the list that you showed me. That's right. Starting with T-Bar support, which is one of my favorites. Let's show it on the big touchscreen here. Um, T-Bar support. And touchscreen support is something that obviously is kind of built into the application here. But you can see there that what, what Tess is doing, you can do a little slower, Tess. She's fading. Oh, you got to grab it figure there. Figure not there you like go. it. So that's a crossfade from one feed to the next. And um, I want to take a moment to talk about this. T-bar support is always kind of in the middle there. Can you hit that studio mode button there? Um, so studio mode, it's on the right-hand side. See it there? Yeah. Studio mode takes it from a single screen, which is just your output. If you hit studio mode again, you get your preview and your um, output mode. So the preview mode, now you can crossfade between preview and output. If you test, if you hit scene number one there, um, that will go up on the preview screen. And now you can fade between them with a nice little T-bar, which is great. Also, you might notice that there's scene collections now is a really cool one. And scene collections, uh, usually if we look, I don't know if Mike, you wanna put uh, my, OBS scene up here. I can show the difference. Um, but usually with uh, OBS, you see a lot of scenes that are um, in the bottom left there. I don't have that. Oh, you don't? Here. Oh, let me, let me, let me change this really quickly for you. Um, usually with OBS in the scenes area, it's like a list, but now they have a button view and it's a lot more like um, XSplit, if, if people are, if people are uh, familiar with XSplit, and this allows you to quickly hit these buttons. So there, this is my screen here, and now you can see that there's these buttons that you can click instead of having to, um, you know, go through a list. And I kind of like that. So there's list mode, and then there's this preview mode. And it's much better for touch screens. So that's why we're showing off the Windows tablet today as well. Okay, so going down the list. Now, for the gamers out there, uh, OBS has added Vulkan su support for game capture, so high-quality capture for Vulkan games. That includes Doom Eternal and other games out there. So that's a really big uh, gaming industry. Ubisoft actually helped uh, support, support that, and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, 
The other thing is there's a new window capture option for folks playing UWP games. So those people who are using Xbox Game Pass, uh, there's a new way to capture those games as well. It also works with Discord servers if you're using Discord. Now, they also added for Linux users, there's a browser base um, capture for Linux. So Linux is catching up a little bit. If you're using OBS on Linux, um, this will be a great uh, update for you. OBS is available on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Now, um, the next one is drag and drop overlays. And this is something I wanted to show uh, today because it's, it's, it's an interesting application if you're an engineer or a designer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to the side. This is an example from Wizard CM who made this. And essentially, he just made a couple examples of buttons that are layers that can be dropped directly into OBS. So if you're a designer or a web designer, um, you can create drop, drag and droppable browser inputs that can go directly into OBS. Um, so we think like Streamlabs, Stream Elements, companies like that will make their product that overlays on top of OBS drag and droppable. Okay, you say browser inputs, so it would be like a website or something. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, I just made that browser. Not just it, an image. It or... opens up a source. So yeah, it's like it can be like a live dynamic, you know, that's cool thing that it could be data from the internet. So there's mm -hmm. lots of different ways that this is going to definitely be used right now. You know, it just came out. So I was even thinking about um, how to use this. In fact, over here you can see a PTZ camera controller that we have built in for PTZ Optics cameras. Um, so that's a browser source that actually has kind of an IP controllable connectivity. Um, with a PTZ Optics camera. So um, Michael peeking out. I was sort of thinking about that. Like, you know, maybe we could, but this is for a little bit more different. This is more for overlays that will be on top of a live stream. Okay. So we talked about the T-bar support. The next big one is SRT support. Now SRT is uh, a stream, a new streaming SRT Alliance is called, uh, it's a high quality, low latency video, secure, reliable transport. And this is actually made for point to point video that can have a fixed latency, usually very low latency, and it can go over the entire world with really good um, point to point control. So OBS has added this support for video output. Uh, I did want to mention and show um, the support that vMix has. I know this is a show about OBS today, but vMix has SRT support as well under the stream dropdown. And you see how you can do a transport stream over UDP, TCP, and uh, TCP pull. I'm not actually an expert in this, to be honest. Do we honest. know what one of the applications might uh, be? But like, if you wanted to send a live video feed from Japan to here, and know exactly like like point to point what the latency is going to be. Um, you could do that. So it's almost like you can run a little television production studio uh, from your computer. Um, so vMix does a really great job of that fixed latency, and it's built. It's kind of like NDI, where NDI is built for the local area network. This is built for unsecure, unreliable areas. Well, not unsecure, but unreliable spaces like the public internet spanning the globe. Okay. It's very interesting new technology. Uh, if you do want to test that, you can send SRT video out of the settings area. All you have to do is use the output option, the stream option here, use custom, and then you, I'm um, sorry, it's this one here. You go to, um, actually it is the stream output here. You just, you just literally type SRT colon slash slash and then the, you know, where it's going. So that's how that works. SRT support, pretty big one. Um, we talked about the scenes list having a grid mode. Uh, you can now also lock um, audio sources. So, so once you get your audio right, sometimes people were talking about maybe bumping it, changing it. You can right click it and you can lock the volume. So that's a pretty big deal. People really like that. Um, that's something that folks have asked for in the past. And the ability to lock that volume is something that so everybody's really excited about. So your volunteers don't 
mess it. Mess yep. with it. If you're using this for a church or a different space and you've got it just where you want it, now you can lock it and not have to have people, you know, mess with it. And I think that's important because people change stuff and, you know, there's volunteers, like you said, people using it. Now, there's a new um, feature for something called a cube LUT. And what a LUT is, is a lookup table. And a lookup table can be applied to a video source to give it like a tint or a change filter. for a setup or a filter. It's a filter. Yeah. It's kind of like an Instagram filter, Taz. <laughs> you know how to use those. So if we right click this here and we go to, now there is a filters option to be quite honest. And in the filters option, it's actually called filters, Taz. You're right. So. We can go to the plus button. Oop. Uh, I turned this laptop into uh, 720 mode to make everything easier to see. Here we go. It's, it's a little hard to get to some stuff. Apply LUT. So when we apply the LUT, we name it. And now we can browse to a path. I'm not going to do this. I don't have any set up right now. But Is you that... can do a cube LUT. And it allows for a lot more flexibility than the traditional PNG LUTs. Um, so, you know, you can apply a filter to your, to your video sources. <laughs> So there we go. Um, other than that, um, the SRT is the big thing here. Browser sources is something that's been in the app for a long time. This is starting to get a lot more heavily used. You can see it here with the PTZ controller that we have built in here um, that allows you to connect directly to a PTZ optics camera and then have the auto pan a lot of people like as well and then that ip address that you type in there um camera can go specific to a home position zoom in and out focus this is a stripped down version there's also multiple other versions uh available of this um as well by the way uh we are going to be testing obs with the atem mini soon so this is the atem mini here um we're going to be testing this out i'm excited to be making a video about that soon so the ATEM Mini is $299. It's a four input wow. HDMI system with USB. So subscribe to the channel. That's going to be coming have out soon. Have we tested it with our cameras? We have, that's what we're going to do this afternoon, Des. Okay. So we're going to test this soon. It'll make sure fun. everything's working. Don't forget to subscribe for that. And then we're also going to make a video on using a touch screen with OBS because you can set up a really nice little OBS system using NDI and the different tools here with full touch capability. Um, and by the way, can you hit that little plus button in the sources section, Tess? Not on that side, on the other one, that one. The other big thing here is the icons. So see all the little icons? That's new in 25. Little stuff like that, making the application more user-friendly. Um, you can see NDI sources there. Um, a tip for using Windows tablets and wireless devices with NDI that don't have an Ethernet port Get the USB to Ethernet adapter. Um, there's a lot of them out there, so you can hardwire connectivity for things like tablets and phones. Give them the bandwidth that they need to really support high bandwidth IP video connectivity. Carla says, is an SRT files for a subtitle file? Um, that is, so SRT, Secure Reliable Transport, is used for you know transporting video over the globe point to point for highly reliable, low latency video. Now, uh, regarding, I think it's SCT files, but I could be wrong. They are used for captions in videos. Okay, uh, just like a, a YouTube bit. video. I haven't different. done that in a while, but. Um, um, what are you doing? Cap CabSat is postponed to October. So uh, that is a big uh, technology show. Uh, we're all wondering if NAD we're gonna have is going to, ban to be canceled. The, the Apple Watch. Sorry, I'm going to put the cancel the on. Show. I'm going to put this on. Sorry, sorry, everybody. Okay. It any is other an interesting time. That we should cover. It's an interesting time right now. Live streaming is so important, um, especially for places like houses of worship or any event gathering spaces that need to gather people together. Um, large gatherings are, you know, not right now in the world with the coronavirus outbreak, something that people are avoiding. Yet the world needs to continue on. Um, so that's something that we're going to be talking about on Wednesday. All right. There is one final comment you might consider, Novo 
MSN, I think is asking about the ability to create playlists in OBS with a time code if that is implemented in 25 or earlier. Um, let me go down really quickly the, um, the feature list so I didn't forget anything. Uh, number one at the top is the Vulcan based games. Uh, everyone's been trying to do that. Rainbow Six, Siege, and things like that. The Microsoft Store, the, U, uh, the UWP programs, uh, the browser plugin for Linux, if you're on Linux. The Advanced Scene Collection Import, which is similar to that. If you're moving from XSplit to OBS, you can now import your XSplit scenes into OBS. So that's an interesting um, feature, and they're hoping to support more things for that. There are media source hotkeys that allow you to control the playback, start, pause, stop and report for stop and restart for media sources. So that's new. We talked about ability to drag and drop URLs, the T-bar support, the SRT support, that grid mode that we looked at, which was at the bottom. I really like that for naming the scenes, especially for touch screens, the cube LUTs, the light lookup tables, the option to show and hide all audio sources, plus the ability to lock them. Um, there is actually another big feature that we might as well show, which is in the audio sources section that allows you, if you remember in the advanced audio properties, um, it, it's DB here, um, and that's decimal levels, but now you can actually change this to have to show a percent. Um, so that is in the options. There's a, there's a lot more options that we didn't go into in the settings area. Um, but in audio, there is the option now to, um, somewhere in the settings, I haven't seen that yet, um, where to change it from um, percent, decimals to percent. But I saw that in there. Uh, copy and paste multiple sources. Uh, there's a system tray. Brian wants to know, can I use SRT to stream on multiple platforms? No, that is not what that is used for. If you need to stream to multiple platforms, you should be thinking about Restream.io or Easy Live. Um, that is the way that that works. But um, Shaggy Mummy says, does Stream Geeks have a Discord? We are just starting one. I'm so glad you asked that. We have a brand new Discord. We're launching it very soon, and we want you guys to all be part of it. So which camera am I looking at? This one? That one. Um so the Stream Geeks Discord is how is I'm so glad you asked that. We're launching that very soon. Keep on the lookout. It'll be on the homepage of the website. Uh, I just started one. Did I invite you That's to it? That's weird. I, just, I wonder if they saw it on our website. Maybe you guys saw I, it. I think you did. Interwebs. And I'm like, what the heck is this? So new Discord server coming soon. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the channels and the setup and everything right now. And so this is in beta, so not everybody can get it? No, anyone can get this. It is in beta. Um, but uh, it's called a release candidate. So what OBS is releasing this is to give it out to the world, find the bugs, find the fixes, Where and can send they get them it? to the people team. Are saying having trouble finding it. Just Google OBS release candidate, and release you're looking candidate. for release OBS 25 release candidate uh, two. And I will say that like uh, there is still some bugs with this. I was just using like your T bar worked on the the touch tablet. Yeah, it doesn't work on my Windows laptop. So I was going to report that. I just don't know what is causing that. Uh, the T-bar doesn't work on mine, so it's still in beta. Uh, definitely noticed, start just, and I've only been playing with it for the few days, definitely noticed a few things. I've reported a few bugs. I'm about to report the T-bar issue as well. So do your, do your part. Try it out. Uh, report the bugs. But uh, maybe stick with OBS 24 um, for productions. For productions. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. I think we've got some cool content regarding this that we got to go make now. All right. Thanks.